Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to take a look at these guys. So it seems to be all the kids nowadays are into this uh, vibration dampening thing on the stepper motors. And I think it's kind of interesting. So I looked into it and I saw some um, vibration dampeners on the internet, Amazon, eBay, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but I headed over to Thingiverse and I found some over there. And so I'm going to do a couple, um, not really a series, but I'm going to do a couple different episodes showing some options I found. Uh, but I'm going to start with this option here, which I thought was rather neat. So it basically comes in two pieces. Now there's actually a top and a bottom, but I sort of manually remixed a little bit of this because part of it comes with the top uh, has a little uh, uh, piece here for the insertion of an M3 uh, insert. I'm assuming you kind of press in with a vise or something like that. And then the top is just kind of plain and you see here um, and then this again attaches to your motor and we'll look at that a little bit uh, more in a second. But what happens is it has this race and they give you this sort of template for a uh, vibration insert that you make through different means to go in here and then you kind of glue the two together. Uh, what I did, uh, since I don't have any of the inserts and I really don't, you know, want to use the inserts, I just took the two, uh, what would be bottoms and used those together like this and then assembled it in this fashion. So what I have is this bolted right to the motor and then what I'll do is I'll just use some M3s and put some nuts on the other side of this uh, and take a little wrench and hold it and tighten this down. Now the idea behind this is as the the motor kind of runs and torques and the vibration isn't transferred. Now what I decided to give a shot is to make the, the vibration pieces out of TPU which you can see they 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 move quite a bit. Now I did it like 10% infill. I haven't cleaned this guy up too much. Uh, there's some stringiness especially since I use such low infill. Uh, I would probably even try maybe five in the future uh, I did two shells. I might even try one shell in the future, maybe one shell at 10%. 10 you might want to try different ones because I thought this was pretty flexible after I got it off. But after I glued it up and, uh, you know, epoxied it up, when the surface, you know, attaching to these two surfaces makes it pretty rigid and it doesn't move as much as I thought. Now, it does very slightly move. What I, what I actually did to make this a little bit better is I actually put this in a vise and crushed it down a couple times, you know, ran the vise in, ran the vise out, and uh, it, it it seems to be better. Now, I, I guess it depends upon how much vibration isolation you want to achieve. It depends upon the material. Now, the, the piece I saw on Thingiverse is he was using, I'm assuming it was a he, it's some kind of avatar, uh, but the uh, uh, piece they were using is cork in here. Um, I'm a little bit skeptical of that because cork can kind of pull apart. This isn't going to pull apart. You can put a lot of force on this, and I use some pretty good epoxy on this. So this isn't coming apart. Now, now I'm thinking about um, using using the laser maybe to cut out some heavy neoprene or other rubber product to go in here. So I may. That's why I say I, I'll probably do a couple more of these in the future to kind of show maybe a little bit of the evolution of this. I am going to give this a shot in a couple applications because I think vibration dampening in some cases uh, can be a good thing. Uh, you know, because you don't want to transmit the harmonic oscillations from this motor into your machine, or you kind of want to isolate that as much as possible. Uh, you know, especially when you're working with very tight tolerances as we are with 3D printing and CNC and that other kind of stuff. Uh, the one problem, though, not really a problem, but reality we have to face, is this is going to eat up some of your shaft size. And so if you're in a case where you have to flip the over and bring it up, you might run out of some room. So something to kind of keep in mind is do you have enough shaft length on your stepper for it to really work? So um, because I'm looking at the Tron XC, and on the Tron XC, because the one is flipped, I don't have enough room to use one of these on here, but I want to use a vibration dampener. So that's where there's going to be another episode where I come up with a solution, but you have to stay tuned for that one. So again, I wanted to share this. Um, I'm thinking Ninja Flex might be a little bit better than TPU. I, again, I mean, you can see how flexible this is and um, everything. It's actually pretty good, but once this comes together with these two surfaces, 
it, it's far tougher than I actually thought. And this might be enough. I, I've never held and seen how much give there is in an actual um, vibration dampener. Maybe I'll order some and see. Uh, but I thought this was kind of an easy way to experiment with it, and I, and I do plan to do some more with this. I found this interesting. So I'll have the link on Thingiverse to this below, and so if you're interested in it, um, you know, go ahead and make it. Let me know the outcome. If you have other solutions, you know, 3D, CNC, laser, whatever solutions uh, to this, hey, please share them in the comments below. I'll take a look at them because, again, um, I, I, you know, again, not going to be a series, but I'm going to probably do some of these hit and miss for Wednesday fill-ins uh, because I think this is really an interesting idea in the vibration dampening. The other thing I'm looking at doing is building a meter to measure vibration to see, hey, if you put this on there, I, you know, is it really better having a vibration dampener or not? How much does it not transfer, you know, sort of do before and after? So what I'm looking at is Raspberry Pi with a vibration sensor. If you have some suggestions for that, hit me up in the comments below. I'd love to hear about them. Maybe you built something or you have an idea how to build something. Uh, I, I'm thinking about having two sensors. So I want a vertical and horizontal sensor to mount to the printer to measure the forces in, in both directions, you know. Uh, so anyways, hopefully you find this interesting. If you did, like I did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget, subscribe button's going to be coming up over there. Swag shop's up there. And hey, we look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.